Hi, I'm Kitty Feldy, and on this bonus edition of the Book Club for Kids, we continue our conversation with writer Jeff Rodkey. Jeff, your book, We Are Not From Here, is so unusual. Where did the idea come from? I don't remember. <laughs> I think, like, I honestly, I, I do remember I was just, I was sitting at my breakfast counter, you know, and it just kind of popped into my head, like, you know, human moves to an alien planet and the aliens are discriminating against him. You know, and the, and the aliens are like, we don't want humans here. You know, you people are horrible. You blew up your own planet. Like, it, it, it was, I, I don't know. It's just kind of, because I'd, I'd been thinking about the issue a lot. And, it, you know, you're, the, all your best ideas come from your subconscious mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the subconscious mind is really weird. And I don't know how it works. It just, stuff kind of pops up every now and then. And you're like, where did that come from? I don't know. Is that how you usually write a book? Waiting for something to fall from the sky? It usually starts with an overall premise or just sort of a, you know, like a funny situation or, or character. And, and then I just, you know, kind of keep adding to it. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll carry around, you know, I'll carry around a paper and a pen. And if I have an idea as I'm walking down the street, which occasionally happens, I'll, I'll write it down. And eventually, you know, by the time I have like a printed page worth of material, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll type it up and then I'll keep writing notes in the margins of it and then, re, you know, and reprinting fresh copies. And eventually I, I'll, if I feel like, and, and then at some point I start doing research because almost everything, you know, even, even things that are fantastical require research. Uh, you know, we're not from here. I, I did a lot of research, believe it or not, into like the social life of bees, and bees actually have a social life. It's kind of, it's pretty wild stuff. And then at some point, the file is large enough that you just start writing. And, and it's kind of, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of floundering. Um, and, 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 and sometimes there's a lot of false starts. And the, the, inter- the other interesting thing is sometimes what you wind up with is not at all what you started with. My first book series was a trilogy. It was called The Chronicles of Egg. And it started as a story about a pirate. And the, the pirate does not there is the pirate does not exist anywhere in the book. Uh, it, he was he was the inspiration for the story, and at some point in the creative process, he just disappeared from it completely. And every book is different, but that's generally it. There aren't many science fiction novels for kids hitting the charts these days. I guess you could say science fiction is kind of out of fashion. I'm actually not sure if science fiction was ever that popular. I think I think it's always been sort of. Uh, an acquired taste in some ways that is not that broader mainstream. One of, and w- which was a surprise to me. I, you know, at one point I remember I, I wrote We're Not From Here and uh, the first review I read of it, it was a very complimentary review by, uh, by Betsy Bird at School Library Journal. And she started the review by saying, there's a common belief that kids don't like science fiction. And I read that and I thought, why did I just spend two years writing a book that's science fiction? I, no one told me this. I had no idea. And then the first time I went to a school, you know, to present to the kids as, as uh, auth- that, you know, children's authors do, I asked the librarian, I said, so, you know, the, there was a review that said that kids don't like science fiction. Is that true? And she goes, oh, yeah, they just they don't like it. You just you can't you can't force them to read it. And I was I was kind of surprised. So and I love science fiction. But uh, clearly, I'm, I'm in the minority. Were you trying to make a statement about non-binary kids? Or maybe about the way we make assumptions as readers about the characters? In other words, tell us all about the character of Lan. Lan has a gender, but I don't specify what Lan's gender is. And it doesn't matter in the context of the story whether Lan is male or female or non-binary. So it's, it's a choice that I left up to the reader. And the, the thing that's kind of cool about books is, you know, when, when you read a book, you are actually helping create the story because the, the, the author is giving you kind of a blueprint and, a, and, and, a, and, a, and an incomplete description of the world. And they leave you to fill in the blanks and, and sort of create the pictures in your mind that are actually your experience of the book, which is why when you, when you love a book and then you watch the film adaptation, you usually get angry because the pictures are different than the ones are in your head that are what you made of the movie. And so in, you know, in this particular version, I kind of left that decision of, of what Land's gender is and also what Land's ethnicity is up to the reader. One of my favorite contemporary science fiction writers is John Scalzi. Uh, and 
He wrote a book called Lock In, in which uh, the, the main character uh, is an FBI agent who is in a, functionally in a coma and exists in the world th through a robot. And he never specifies the gender of the main character, which is something that is only po it's not possible if you just tell a normal story about somebody existing in the world, but a character who is who is in a coma and exists through a robot, the fact of their gender ceases to matter. And that uh, was a really interesting conceit. I got three quarters of the way through that book without realizing that I had gendered the, the character and John Scalzi had not. And it was such a like kind of mind blowing thing that uh, I, I ripped it off for We're Not From Here. And uh, if you read the book, you'll notice Land's gender and ethnicity is uh, are never specified, which is something I can only get away with because Land spends most of the book just interacting with aliens who don't know anything about human genders and could care less. So what's the difference between writing a screenplay and writing a fictional middle grade novel? First of all, there are a lot more people involved in the screenplay. Uh, you, you know, especially if it ever gets to the point of making a movie, like you first, you know, you... It, Inevitably, like with anything, whether it's a book or a screenplay, you want to get feedback from other people uh, as you're writing it because it's the only way you're going to you're going to figure out what's wrong and what you need to make better. But with a screenplay, once you've written it, then, you know, the, there's a producer and they're going to look at it and they're going to have ideas. And then if you if you sell it to a movie studio, there's going to be a studio executive and they're going to have ideas. And then if they attach a director to it, the director is going to have ideas and. Uh, then if, the, if they, you know, if they get an actor to play the lead, the actor is going to have ideas. And at every stage of the process, there's another rewrite with another person's input. And at some point you get fired and replaced by some other writer. Uh, and the, the great thing about writing books is they, at least I've never experienced this to this point, no one ever fires you from your own book. And, uh, and the things that are in the book are, are, are years and years alone, so you get all the credit or all the blame. Whereas if, if a move, when a movie gets made, you know, a lot of times other writers have, have worked on it and sometimes they don't get any credit at all. So your name is on it even though it's not your work and that can get really kind of weird. But what about the writing process itself? Explain the difference between structuring a screenplay and writing a novel. It's not that different. There's a there's a more strict sort of structure that you usually have to follow when you're writing a screenplay because most movies follow a, a three act structure and you know it's better to try to you know to hit all the plot points at the point in the in the script where you know traditionally they they belong and and it's a lot looser with a book. Books can have almost any kind of structure, but I found in practice they still need a beginning and a middle and an end, and so that winds up still being in some ways a three act structure and the you know my process is kind of the same i start with a lot of notes and eventually i assemble the notes into an outline so in that respect it's not that different we have interviews with dozens of other writers at our website bookclubforkids.org and if realistic fiction is more your thing check out our other podcast the fina mendoza mysteries it's a family story set on capitol hill intrepid young detective, a crabby older sister, and a great big orange dog named Senator Something. That's the Fina Mendoza Mysteries, wherever you listen to podcasts.